here's a short overview of what we want to do today. Uh, I just want to give a, a short introduction uh, to the virus service itself. Um, what is our objective today? And especially focus on a live presentation of the service itself. And this I want to do firstly, giving a quick overview of the of the components and widgets. It's we are quite a large group, so it's difficult to to know where we are in let's say different levels of, of knowledge of the service. So I will try to give a short general introduction uh, of of the tool itself and then i would like to simulate or go through what could be a typical workflow or usage and um, this uh, yeah shortly some days ago there was quite a, a saharan dust event maybe you saw that also the uh, iolos team tweeted uh, some images about this so i think this is a nice example to to look at uh, of what could be a, a typical workflow and yeah af let's say after the going through this uh, we might go a bit deeper into some of the features of, of the client this depends a little bit on time and um, and then I, I think we can merge this into the let's say q a session where i hope we can if um, anything that is not clear or uh, you want to have more details uh, I think we can discuss then at the end all right so yeah let's say workshop objective or uh, so we uh, with the agency with ESA uh, we have communicated and and seeing we want to proliferate the uh, the information about this tool uh, so it's it's a bit more difficult to to find events where we can get together and and, and show uh, different uh, services provided um, so what we want to do today is uh, so spread awareness uh, about the or um, available tools so we kind of know that there is no one perfect solution for everything so it always depends on what you want to do um, you select and look for the tools that are available uh, so what um, why uh, isa helped organize this uh, this event is to to really show and and make you aware of one of the tools there are there is available and and to help you decide uh, when this tool fits best for you so that you understand what capabilities this tool has and what you can do with it uh, so when the use cases that would fit best uh, to use this tool so this on one side on on the other side uh, we're always or right now we're still evolving and trying to uh, make the service fit our users better so what we really would uh, would be great is during the q a uh, try also to have uh, a conversation about what uh, what different aspects might make this service uh, more um yeah what would improve your uh, your use uh, with this service so this is also an important point we want to to address today all right um as i'm not completely familiar about um let's say the different it is possible you have heard of the ILO service the virus for ILO service already during uh, last calibration validation workshop but just to give you a quick overview before we dive in. So uh, the virus for IOLO service is, is a web client that lets you easily and directly visualize and analyze um, the uh, Earth Explorer's uh, IOLO's mission data. 
it can be accessed just through the web browser so you don't need to install any software uh, under iolos.services uh, the service is provided by ESA and has been an implemented and operated by AOX, by us. Um, and the project uh, started with collaboration with, with uh, DLR, Dorit, and also help from KNMI uh, to understand, let's say, the actual user needs. It was quite an experience to dive into com in the complexity of the data. So this was quite an adventure <laughs> and it was really, uh, yeah, an incredible journey to, to a company to really be able to start before the launch of the satellite and, and, and see the real actual data for the first time also on our platform. Uh, yeah, this was a really great experience, and it was a really great experience with with our partners and DLR, uh, KM, KM, KNMI, and, and with Dorit, as well as of course with uh, our um, counterpart at ESA, um, and how and yeah throughout the time. So the service has been launched uh, since August two thousand and eighteen. Um, Initially, the service was only open for uh, specific users, mostly calibration validation users, um, but ESA had the foresight on, looked at who uh, would have been getting access. Uh, since May, 12th of May, 2020, uh, we have been also in parallel with the opening of the data on the ADDF. Uh, we made the self-registration possible through the through the website. So uh, for the openly available data, so level 1B and level 2B, uh, this can now be accessed by, by anyone who registers. All right. So I think I'll jump now into the live presentation of the client. I, I have uh, quite a hopefully extensive set of slides that I think I so we will also made available through I think the best approach will be through confluence but uh, we we will talk about what will be the best possibility but I'll I'll go to the browser now and and go through this uh, uh, directly in a live presentation all right so hopefully you can see um a browser on the left a globe and on the right some plots let me just check and see if i get i do see it all right so okay perfect so i got some okays all right, so once you log into the system, um, this is basically the view you will get. It, it sets the, the time to one of the um, most um, uh, shortly at the current time. Um, okay, I will try to give a, a complete overview of, of what we see. I think an interesting thing to have that was introduced also for the public release is this tutorial. Uh, the tutorial really tries to give uh, quite an extensive um, presentation on uh, all of the um, all of the different panels and configuration options that you have. So if you want a refresher of things, I really recommend using the tutorial you can navigate with the arrow keys so if you press uh, right uh, it will go through all of these items which i will go through in a second too but i think is a really nice and interactive way to to get an overview again of the possibilities you have and and what you can do so if you ever feel that you need uh, a refresher, uh, feel free to, to use that tutorial. 
All right, uh, you can escape the tutorial by, by pressing the escape button. Okay, so for a general overview for uh, whoever is not uh, familiar with the client, uh, we have here on the left, uh, so we have two panels. On the left, a virtual two-dimensional globe where we can see uh, the vertical curtains. Um, uh, per default, the level 2B data will be selected the first time entering. Um, and yes, so uh, fully interactive uh, 3D globe on the left and on the right, we have also a fully interactive uh, analytics view. So on the top, we have this um, different uh, plots that can be configured in multiple ways. And on the bottom of the plots, we have this filter panel. The filter panel uh, has also some uh, yeah, um, configuration objects. So let's go into the data selection first. Uh, we have this uh, products panel uh, where we see all of the available data or product types that can be viewed with the virus for ILOs. Uh, for the self-registered user or the, uh, the only the level 1B or the public data is available. So level 1B and level 2B. And also for a specific uh, time frame or baseline. So if you see only level 1B and level 2B, um, it is possible so yeah, feel free to contact us because I guess if you are already in Confluence, you're all calibration and validation users. So you should be able to also get access to, to the other data sets. Okay, so this is the products panel. And the second quite important panel is the data panel that was introduced uh, with release two, I think. And so we see here again uh, all of the data types, and we see um, most of the parameters available for this data type. Um, this is quite important because initially we were pre selecting, in a sense, for the user uh, which parameters are relevant or make most sense. Uh, and through this panel, we can now really let the user decide what, uh, what he is interested in looking. Uh, still, it is very important for us that you can see something without configuring anything. This, this was an important point. So there will be, or we have tried, of course, to have sensible defaults for everything. So when you open the first time the client, you will actually see something. And what um, seems to be an important, or what we decided is uh, probably for interesting for most users is the Rayleigh channel for the level 2B product, uh, which is what we see here loaded as default. Okay, so once you have selected uh, data product here in the products panel and you have decided which parameters are of interest for you here in the data configuration. Again, maybe you don't need to change anything depending on what you're interested in. Um, you can see here in the bottom, this is the interactive uh, timeline or time slider. Uh, you can here in the uh, lower section, where this arrow is, you can click and drag. And you will see here the product availability um, of the current data product you have selected. So you see always at which times there is data available. Uh, where we have some jumps, it might be um, time and calibration time or things like that. So it really is helpful to see when we have data. You can zoom out, zoom in, uh, or you can use here this widget to, to jump to a specific date if you if you're know um, uh, a specific event you want to look at. And uh, then just when this 
cross appears, you can click and drag to select uh, a time interval that you're interested in. This will request the data from the server and automatically load and adapt the plots here. Okay, so uh, let's go a little bit into the um, analytics view here on the right. Uh, we have, um, as I said, the, the plots here on the top and filters. The plots are organized based on what we call, in a sense, visualization groups. This uh, depends on the data product. So for level 1B or level 2B, it would be Rayleigh and me. For other products like level 2A, we have SCA, ICA, and MCA. Uh, also a, a middle group, bins, and things like that. So uh, let's say we would be all uh, only interested in looking at Rayleigh. We could switch uh, both plots, for example, to Rayleigh. And here on, the, uh, on this uh, cog, uh, we can activate this uh, label where we can change. So right now we're plotting time against altitude. And for the third dimension we have here is uh, right now uh, velocity, but we could, for example, also show uh, H-loss uh, error. And if we click Apply, uh, we have here a one-to-one -one comparison of, uh, we can see the uh, Rayleigh wind result velocity and the error uh, plotted, um, yeah, one on top of, of the other. And again, so this is interactive. We can zoom in and, and look closely in all of these elements, as well as every bin is um, has the informa relevant information also that we selected through the data. So we see here uh, for this bin also error, uh, altitude, uh, dam intersection, pressure, temperature, and so on. So, yeah, really um, a lot of information that is available here in the plot. So it's possible to zoom in X is independent and X and Y, as well as if you zoom in in the in, in the plot itself, you you get X Y zoom to the area you're pointing in with the mouse. You can also uh, use the color scale interactively so you can zoom in and zoom out uh, to better get a feeling of the ranges uh, you're looking at but you can also uh, input them through uh, for all of the axes you can input it uh, also uh, as a, as a uh, through an input oh. sorry um, okay so all right, um, my screen was flashing. Sorry, I hope. Can you still all see the presentation? I, I do, yes. yes. Yes, sorry. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, this was a bit of an introduction to the, the plotting tool and or the analytics panel. And here on the bottom, we have uh, filters. So if I switch again to maybe back to me to have a reference, um, the filters are quite an important tool um, as the data itself is, yeah, it's, it's really uh, uh, complicated to also understand and know exactly what is supposed to be visualized. So for example, for level to be, um, to get, in a sense, the resulting image, we have to consider quite some points. And this was something that we also tried to have as a default for the user. So he doesn't necessarily have to take care of this if he is not uh, very familiar to the data. So right now, all of these filters uh, are applied. We have here. Um, Boolean filters, and, and these are um, selection for filters. So if we were to remove all of the filters that are applied um, 
per default. So I'm going to remove filtering by the validity flag uh, of me. I'm going to remove filtering by the uh, validity flag of Rayleigh. And no longer, so for me, it's good to, or it makes sense to look only on, on the cloudy observation time. So if I also use no filter here, and for Rayleigh, it's good to look at the clear observation time. So this is how the data would look um, without filtering. So let's say this is all of what is available. Um, but again, uh, so these filters are applied for as default to, to give a first uh, nice view of, let's say, the Mm, yeah, information as one would usually look at. So these filters are quite um, an asset, we think. And so these are some type of filters. So let's say Boolean or flags. Uh, we have also uh, mask filters with multiple bins. And these here are range filters. And these are also very interesting in the sense that they actually show the distribution of the data, uh, which we think is really important to understand the data itself and to be able to, uh, to actually use the filters. So if I wanted to filter by the age loss error, for example, uh, we see that uh, values, so it's in centimeters per second, we see that there are little values between one, uh, zero and 200. We can actually, so right now the range is set between zero and 1000. We could set it to zero and 200 to actually see. Yeah, it seems that there is actually no data in this value range. Let's go to between zero and 1000. Um, so if, ah, I guess, uh, so this is for Rayleigh. If we were to change any um, parameter related to this. So for example, if here instead of clear, we go to no filter, we would see how this curve updates. Uh, and let's remove the validity flag, for example. Yeah, so we have seen it, it was a small change, but there was an increase here in this higher values. We can add filters for any number of parameters we're looking at right now, so also through the data. Uh, so let's say we add the Rayleigh reference temperature. So we see here that <coughs> the distribution of the Rayleigh uh, reference temperature. And if we click and drag to select uh, a specific uh, interval, this will again also filter the data so we see here uh, how it has been filtered and all um, related parameters such as the error uh, the distribution also updates so you can really see and understand the relation or, or maybe correlation between parameters okay um so i think as a quote unquote <laughs> quick introduction for the functionality of of the service this i think covers most of the items um i thought that it would be really great to um yes to go through a possible use case to understand the workflow of the client or one possible workflow. And there was uh, uh, an interesting event uh, the 19th of June, so 10 days ago, uh, where we saw here uh, quite a Sahara dust uh, plume. So I thought this is something we could uh, look at together as how, how it would, how would one approach this. So if we're interested in, in particles in the air, it kind of makes sense to look at uh, level 2A. So we go to product, select level 2A, 
So here we see the grouping I was talking about. So we have SCA and MCA, and we have here the SCA extinction. Okay, so we knew uh, the 19th of June this, this event happened. So what we could try to do is, okay, let's say here click select area. <clears throat> We're interested here in the Atlantic Ocean, yeah, somewhere around here. So this is the area we're interested in. So we see <clears throat> if we select the bounding box, uh, only the passes <clears throat> that go through here will be uh, loaded. And then we can just zoom out a little bit, uh, scroll to the day. So we have here June 19th. We could also use this uh, widget to jump to the date. And then we can select, let's say, the whole day for this area. So this will be, take a little bit to load. On the server side, we really go through all of the files and extract the, the important information and, and just send this information to the client. Uh, so we see here, okay, this seems interesting. Uh, there is here, quite elevated values of, of SCA extinction. So this could mean, uh, yes, that there might be an event here or something interesting to look at. Uh, right now we're plotting against time, so it's uh, a little bit difficult to see the, let's say, different curtains. What we could try to do is, so if we click on a point, uh, so, uh, we see here uh, this curtain highlighted. So, okay, let's say we want to have a closer look at this specifically. Um, and we want to see, so we see here that the curtain on this side, the one we're looking at is uh, descending. So, uh, thinking in time, it, maybe it makes sense to look in the curtain from the other side. So we have now basically the, the same view for the curtain. So, okay, let's say these seem like quite elevated values. Right now we're using a color scale. Actually, I'm gonna hide the filters for a second to have a little bit more space here. So if we look at this higher values, we see, okay, extinction is actually already a 500. So, yeah, um, maybe we don't want to necessarily look at this lower value. So, ah, I'm sorry, just ah, one second. All right, um, good. So we see here <clears throat> that we're at around 500. So we could, for example, scroll up a little bit and have uh, a better feeling <clears throat> of the values we're seeing here. Or if we're actually not necessarily interested in seeing all these other values, we can open up the filters panel and we could add a filter for, uh, if we type here, uh, we can actually filter the list. So let's say I write extinction or just EX, and we want to add the SCA extinction. Uh, so the um, scale for, for the filters adapts based on, on the values. So it seems there, there's some invalid values, uh, higher values. So we know we're interested in something between zero to 500. We can go to edit and say, well, let's give us some room up. So we go from zero to 1000. And we see here again, the distribution of the values. So, okay, in order to see just these higher values, uh, we can then 
select uh, click and drag as we did before and i don't know maybe go down to 56. all right and now we're already seeing only values between 56 and uh, 800. we can play a little bit with uh, things like uh, opacity um to see through the curtains and okay so let's say this event seems quite interesting uh, so it would be great to further work with this i'm going to remove the filter now for a second so the next step what we could do is we can either work uh, well, still look at the data here, so um, decide what we're plotting and, and try to under better understand uh, the possibilities, or we can uh, download the data. So in the download panel, uh, we already see here that some filters have been applied. So uh, as a default, let's say your selections will be applied. So we see here uh, the day, the 19th, from the start of the day to, let's say, more or less end of the day. You can change here your parameters. And this uh, the bounding box is also applied. So we see the longitude and latitude values. And what we can do is, so we can either package the original files. So if we look here in the timeline, these are all of the products that we have, let's say, touched to generate uh, this view. So we could click on package original files. This would create a, a zip package with all of the default Earth Explorer binary format. Um, or we can process the data and, and create a download link. And this creates this as a NetCDF file. So if we click on process and create link, uh, this uh, works asynchronously. So let's say if, if this was a process that took longer, um, you could close the, the tab and, and just let it process. And when you come back, it would be listed here. You have some information about the process details. And if you click on the info of the source data, as we saw here in the timeline, you get actually all of the touched files plus their uh, data, uh, sorry, it's called uh, data set descriptors. So we have for each file the data set descriptors. So uh, what we see here in this table. So all of this, this is the reference data to how. Uh, let's say this data was created and then we can just click download and we will get uh, a net cdf uh, with uh, these applied filters um, i yeah i i don't think I, I will go into opening the net cdf file right now but so that you have uh, yeah the understanding so you can play here with the filters and really only download the data you're interesting interested in without let's say having to consider which products exactly you need and how you would subset them and things like that of course uh, you could always still download the original files and this will give you exactly those file those untouched files if you have processes that already work with these files okay um so let me change the scale again so uh, let's say zero to uh i thought okay i'm quite flipped around um we <clears throat> there is also a very interesting functionality that is importing uh, a kml file 
so you could do some further comparison or a visual comparison or analysis here. Uh, we actually have in another project, the top project, uh, where we have uh, um, experimented or worked with what we call the data triangle. So a service making satellite data, model data, and ground station data available. Um, we have access uh, and can visualize Sentinel-5P data. So I thought it would be quite interesting to create a composite for this area, which was uh, quite uh, nicely could be done. And I just created a, a very simple KML with a rectangle and a reference image. So we can just select it and upload it. Uh, so we have here a composite of the Sentinel uh, 5P aerosol index. And OK, let's maybe apply the extinction filter again. And I think we can really see, I mean, the, the reference image is maybe not completely perfectly um, um, in, in position, I, I did this. So, but I think we can really see a very nice um, um, acc accordance or um, so, yeah, a really nice um, overlap of this data. And I, it might be really interesting to have this information. So we have this um, just two dimensional information and with IOLOS we actually have elevation information which um, I think might be really potentially for uh, a lot of events very, very interesting to understand on which layer and height processes are happening. So really great potential to better understand and help model uh, any kind of um, event uh, in, in the atmosphere. Um, Okay, so I think as for the use case, um, this would be more or less something that uh, could be done. Uh, the idea or what I think makes the virus for uh, IOLUS a, a great tool is really this uh, quick access to the data. Uh, this is um, really uh, has a lot of capability to to visualize and analyze and browse and, and understand and find uh, possible events um, the date because yeah the data itself is is quite complex so yeah being being able to really look into the data like this uh, has a lot of potential um Okay, so now that uh, we, we have gone through this, I think we're quite okay in time. I would, um, yeah, um, try to show some other functionalities that are, that I think are interesting and might maybe not be so quickly, um, uh, findable, let's say the the client itself has a lot of functionality and, and it's difficult to make everything really easily uh, understandable. Um, so there are, ah, okay, let me check. I just, sorry. Okay, I, I just saw there are some information, some questions in the chat. Uh, I should keep a better eye on this. Um, yeah, feel free to <clears throat> to also yeah add questions to the chat, and when we go to the Q and A, also we can talk uh, directly more. Uh, the Sentinel Five P image uh, I just created a, a KML a KML file, so this um, 
uh, I think it's a Google image, uh, Google Earth uh, format. And maybe I can show just for a second how that looks. It's a really simple, um, it's a really simple file. I can make the file available also as an example for um, uh, in with with the slides in, in the confluence. Uh, not sure how to best change for a second. Yeah, so this is basically the file. So I hope you can see that. Um, actually, yeah, this, uh, yeah, basically it's just a latitude longitude box. So I just need to know the coordinates and then I can just reference uh, any image that is online. And, and I put the image that I created on, uh, on a image uh, hosting service. So I just quickly moved it there. And this is basically all you need, just the, the reference plus the latitude and longitude box. And you can import any image. Um, yeah, and you can import any image, uh, let's say with uh, using KML and, and any, any location you want on the globe. And, or in general, any simple KML file where you have some features or points, or for example, calibration and validation sites or things like that, you could uh, load directly and visualize on the globe. Okay, I'll go back to the client. All right, so some interesting things to consider. Uh, if we go back to level 2B, for example, I wanted to show uh, some further functionality of the analytics panel. So let's go to the, let's say, latest data. I'll just quickly unselect anything and clear the selection. And I will select uh, this data range. So the latest data, this is, I don't know, more or less, yeah, more or less one day uh, unfiltered. So this is uh, a bit of a bigger request. It will take a little bit to load. Um, maybe as a recommendation, um, I mean, this is all of the rendering is done on, on the client, so on the browser. So um, having a dedicated graphics card or in general, uh, a bit more powerful computer uh, really helps if you want to look at larger data sets. Um, okay, maybe actually, yeah, let's give it a second. Yeah, I think my computer is also a bit um, overwhelmed with everything that I have running right now. Uh, this was working. So okay, let's give it a second. All right. So we see this is quite a large amount of data, but um, this also gives quite some interesting insight in um, how some of the jets are distributed. So it's also kind of interesting uh, to see. Uh, so this can provide quite some interesting information. If we go to products here in the this settings button, this is also described in the tutorial, uh, you can select uh, which parameter should be visualized here on the globe, uh, as well as you can select the granularity for level 2B. You can select also uh, group information. I will show that in a second later on. 
and you can uh, also remove or show the outlines that show here the direction in which the um, in which the uh, curtain or or the um, swath is taken okay and okay yeah it feels like the presentation plus what's going on on my computer is a bit much for it right now so i have to be a bit more gentle with the things i do let's give it a second again i'll just check if there are some questions yeah just maybe just going back to the question from uh, get katyan um in principle uh, you could create so if if you have access to imagery of the ecmwf model um you can uh, create a kml with with the extent and an image and you could import it and and let's say visually compare it on the globe as as i did with um with the sentinel 5p aerosol index um I guess it depends exactly on what you want to do, but uh, this this would be a possibility. All right. Uh, so I, I just the outlines uh, remove the outlines, so it kind of looks like this. But what I wanted uh, to show is that uh, so right now uh, we're always plotting either against latitude, longitude, or or time. Uh, this is a restriction in a sense about to allow you to show Rayleigh and me data at the same time because um, they have different groupings in a sense. So in order to be able to show them on the same axes, we actually define shared axes, which are time, latitude and longitude. But if we remove it with the x uh, we can only look at the Rayleigh or uh, me attributes so i i think uh, this gives quite some potential to do things so uh, instead of looking at Rayleigh time uh, i don't know we could for example look at so plot against latitude so uh, what we see here right now is we changed from this kind of bin view to a scatter plot uh, the bin view uh, only works when we have uh, let's say start and end selections for x and y so if we have time against altitude we can see bins so this rectangles because time and altitude have start and end values but right now we're plotting just against latitude interse uh, latitude of them intersection so we have only one point and as altitude the middle of the bin is is drawn as a point so Okay, I think we can do some interesting things with this. If we're looking at uh, latitude, maybe it would be interesting to look at uh, the, what would, could we look at? Uh, the wind velocity. Okay, so maybe we get here a bit of an understanding of the distribution of wind velocity against latitude what we see right now is so we have some gray points gray circles uh, this is filtered out data so we see here uh, there is quite some filtered out data here at the 300 value range so let's say i would remove this uh, validity flag so no longer filtering against uh, validity 
Yeah, okay. It's, this updates also this view here, and it seems again that running the the meet session plus the client plus some of the other things is quite taxing to the system. So sorry, this okay takes a little bit. Yeah, let's check the questions again. Yes, uh, the AUX, uh, so the AUX met data is also available for virus. Uh, I will go into it in a second after this. I will show uh, how it looks like. All right, so now we see that um, all of this data is also uh visualized so we see that there is quite some data with the velocity of uh 327 up here which seems to be marked as uh, not not valid i'm going to try if we go to views we can actually so if you're not so much interested in looking at the globe visualization Inside of views, we can just look at analytics. And maybe this uh, speeds up a little bit some things. So I'm going to reactivate the this filter. And oh, it seems like. Yeah, I, I should select a shorter time span. Okay, in a second. Okay, uh, maybe I can explain then once it's filtered. Uh, so there's this additional uh, config option um, where we have some possibilities about what is shown. So here we see now that the filter data is shown as, as gray uh, um, circles. If we're not interested in seeing the filter data, we can go to the config panel and click on show filter data. So we no longer show the filtered data and uh, so okay we're plotting let's say latitude against velocity uh, we could then if we click on the uh, cog uh, also apply a color scale so or a third dimension so i don't know let's for example also add the h loss error as a color scale so if we apply uh, then we see here the H loss error uh, applied as a color scale. So we see that uh, there's a lot of these outliers that are quite high. Uh, so maybe we're not interested in seeing this. So uh, we have the H loss error uh, value right here. So it seems these values, I don't know, let's uh, select a point. The error is around 3,000 centimeters per second, so quite high. So maybe we're just interested in looking at 0 to 600, let's say 0 to 600. So we select here, okay, let's go to 700. And again, this, yeah, usually is a bit. I, I was reviewing this uh, yesterday and it, it's quicker, but the, the system is taking a bit of a toll with the presentation going on. But if we give it a little bit of time, uh, we will see uh, how it filters out uh, these uh, most of these yellow points. Okay, 
no other questions. Again, with the more data you work with, uh, the yes, um, the, it it takes more effort on the client side to to run. Okay, so yeah, um, so okay, let's uh, change the y-axis. So I think this might be quite an interesting plot to look at. Uh, we could do. I don't know, like uh, daily distribution of wind speeds against H, so showing also the error component. So maybe we see some um, some values that might not be, uh, or yeah, or the distribution of the error against latitude. We can maybe play also with the opacity to see the distribution. Let me check. Yeah, so as points stack together, uh, yeah, we can see also some new information maybe about how the velocity is distributed, so where there are more points or less. Um, we can play with what symbol is used. So right now we're using a circle, maybe a smaller rectangle let's say instead of size eight we could go with rectangle of size four and click apply uh, so there are quite some possibilities so when you use this cock symbol uh, you can here then really uh, play with some options of how you're doing the scatter plot and and how which uh, which axis you draw against which May I, I didn't mention either maybe here on the right side um, you can actually plot uh, a second uh, y axis so maybe i don't know we could play uh, render the altitude i know sorry with altitude we would have a, a bins uh, maybe we have the Altitude of bin. Okay, we could. I don't know. We could take the reference temperature, for example, and scale it down and shift it down. And yeah, maybe use triangle outlines and change the opacity. I don't know. Um, maybe seeing the temperature, reference temperature distribution might point to some effect in against the velocity or error. Okay. So I think um, if you're working with just one plot um, instead of combining plots, uh, I think this uh, really has quite some strong potential to do interesting combinations. And again, every one of these points can be clicked and selected to see all of the related parameters uh, for that bin or point. OK, uh, Aya, I wanted to uh, show for a second the AUX MET data, so I will just click on a time with with no data for a second switch back to the split screen and then go to we have here in the products aux met again if for whatever reason you're not seeing this aux met product here it's that you have the uh, public account in the public account, you only see level 1B and level 2B data, so feel free to, to contact us uh, in that relation. In the presentation, there's also information where to contact us. Okay, so we see here all of the availability for um, uh, the AUX MET data. The AUX MET data is quite, quite large. It was a, quite a challenge to, uh, to, to, actually yeah get a nice visualization 
uh, and, and to load the data. So there are two aspects to think about. Uh, if we go here in the settings panel of AuxMet, there is actually a default altitude filter of 25 kilometers because AuxMet goes quite above uh, the, um, the altitude that uh, the Aeolus uh, satellite measures. So uh, right now we automatically filter with 25 kilometers. So if you're interested in higher altitudes, uh, increase this filter. Uh, the second thing is uh, right now, if we select time, we are only getting the, what we call one dimensional uh, data sets of, of AuxMet. So there's also a lot of information here, uh, also shown as a scatter plot. Uh, so we have surface nadir and off nadir. If you're interested in the two dimensional data, of AuxMet, uh, go to the data panel. And here again, uh, this is because the data is really, really large. So we only load whatever you're interested in. So let's say we would be interested in temperature. So we can type here. And there is a layer temperature of Nadir and layer temperature Nadir. So let's say we want the layer temperature of Nadir. If we select it, apply and close, this will update the data selection. And we see here the temperature uh, rendered as uh, two dimensions. And we see again for, so each, this is uh, again fully interactive and every single point you have the uh, temperature of Nadir for, uh, plotted here. So we could maybe also look at, uh, let's say, I guess, wind or uh, velocity, veloc no, how is it called? One second, there's so many <laughs> different parameters. Um, wind component, centimeters per second. Let's take, for example, the Nadir one apply and close. This again will fetch the data. And we see here the wind component uh, Nadir. And again, we can also play with the color scale here if, if we want to see or look at specific ranges uh, to make this easier visible. We can hide also the filters panel to have a bit larger view. And you could use this information also. So once you have the time selected here, if you were interested about uh, seeing the, so we see the data, I know, so that the dogs make data not, but um, you could, again, you can save this, uh, all of these plots I have been showing. So you can click on the save button uh you can save them in different uh, resolutions so let's say very large and this will create an image um yeah i'm just sharing one tab so yeah basically uh you get a rendering of this image in, in different uh, in the resolution you have selected and then as the time is selected here you could go to level 2b to compare uh, and we see that AuxMet data is a bit before the currently available data. But let's say if you selected here a data set you're interested in, so let's say uh, this uh, data set right here, you could again save this plot, then go to AuxMet, and this would load for exactly the same time interval uh, the data you have selected previously in the data. And again, save this plot and you could, uh, the time should be, the time axis should be the same. So you could put them one on top of the other and so on. Um, okay, maybe a last point, well, uh, last point right now for the live presentation is, so these plots, as, as I showed, you can remove one. 
Uh, so you can remove one plot and, and just play with the data of one of the visualization groups, but you can as well add a plot so you can actually have many plots uh, in parallel uh, to show different things. So we're plotting against time. So let's say maybe we can have the error as scatter plot and we can add, uh, I don't know, latitude as scatter plot. So we actually see um, the latitude value of, of the curtain here. There's also an added functionality to here in the secondary ticks, just because I was looking at the latitude, you can actually also add additional uh, ticks. So we could actually select a latitude of time intersection. So you would have here time and the latitude value uh, you're looking at. There is one thing to consider about uh, this secondary ticks is that depending on the time range you're selecting, um, let's say, for example, if you took a whole day of data as a selection, the latitude as the secondary tick would not make much sense uh, because latitude will be uh, repeating or cyclic through time. So it would give you yeah it 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 would give not really uh, informative uh, information so what we do is we take the time and we look at the equivalent value at that time so you would have a scale that would maybe go up and down in latitude so and as we show as we don't show as many ticks if, if you have a cyclic value that you select as a secondary tick, it, it really is not, it's not representative. So this is a, a thing to consider. Uh, if values repeat in the secondary axis for the time you have selected, it does not, um, yeah, it's not very, uh, yeah, it does not provide much additional information. Okay. Uh, so I think this was quite an extensive walkthrough about what is possible um, with this service. I, I think this would be a good time to move on to Q&A. Let me load up the slides for a second.